Hello everyone, I greet you in the name of God Almighty. My name is Apostle Nathan Silas and today we have a very interesting video to react to and this one's one done by Sheikh and Samuel Green and they're going to have a dialogue of who Jesus Christ was. I believe that it's going to be a very educative um, video and we are going to learn a lot in the stand from the Sheikh when he is speaking. So if today happens to be the first time of you taking out my channel, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on my Facebook and Instagram. And if you have any video you want me to react to, don't forget to drop it at the comment section and I'm going to check it out. So guys, before we get on to the video, I'm a theologian and I make this video not to discredit anyone's religion. This is basically for educational purposes and I believe that at the end of this video, we all are going to learn from this. So let's get down to this video and check this out. Okay. Amazing. Yes, my son. Well, I'm, I'm all right. <laughs> um, all right. First of all, I just want to say you were referring to many of us Caucasians as Englishmen. Um, I've been here for 200 years. I'm Australian, so I'm not an Englishman. That's just one other point there. So I don't freak out too much over that. Uh, second one was. Uh, just, just one second. This might entertain you. You see me, I'm a brown Englishman. In other words, I speak English. English is my mother tongue. You understand? In other words, I, 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 I dream in English and I swear in English. Okay. And, no, no, the, and the psychologists, they say that the language in which you dream and the language in which you swear is your mother tongue. You Indonesian, you say Indonesian, okay. I say, in what language do you dream? In Dutch, if you're dreaming in Dutch, you know, no, the Dutch ruled you for 300 years. Maybe, you know, you got some Dutch blood in you. So I said, you speak, you, you, you dream in Dutch? He said, yes. And you swear in Dutch? He said, yeah. I said, that's your mother tongue. You are ashamed to say that, but that's your Me, me, I dream in English and I swear in English. So English is my mother tongue. So I'm a brown Englishman. Okay. So from that point of view, when I said Englishman, English speaking people, whether you are American, I say you are an Englishman, English speaking person. From the language point of view, I'm describing the people. Englishman. <laughs> oh my God. I guess that if you're saying that you're an Englishman, then I must be. No, I'm a brown Englishman. <laughs> right. Um, first of all, just with the. Uh, we were looking tonight at Matthew chapter 12 and the sign of Jonah and you quite rightly pointed out that, that there were some things in Jonah which are similar to Jesus and some things which are different. Uh, for instance, Jesus is crucified while Jonah is thrown in the sea. That, that's different. Uh, there's a very big difference in that Jonah is disobedient and runs away while Jesus is obedient. So that's a fairly big difference. And our one is Jonah goes to the Gentiles, the, the foreign countries, while uh, Jesus does his ministry within Israel, so there are a few differences. Um, but and, and, and you quite rightly correct, pointed out that the, the significance with the Jonah event is on time, on the three days. Um, as a, like, I read the Bible uh, all the time. I've actually spent part of my holidays. I read the Quran, and so I, I take the scriptures very seriously. But I know that in order to get the full picture of something, you have to read all of it. You have to read the whole book. So I just want to read a bit more of Matthew, where Jesus speaks again about the three days. So this is just, just from, uh, this is from a translation of the Bible called the NIV. It's Matthew chapter 16, verse 21. And it says, From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hand of the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. And so I think when you read all of it, he is saying that the three days I'm going to die. There are, I've got some other references up here as well as to those, but they're all fairly similar where they talk about Jesus dying. I just want to know what you say that, because there are many verses in the Bible, I don't know how much time I want to take up here, but where Jesus says, you know, I, I did die. No, my son, you have to agree with me that what Jesus was talking about, the sign of Jonah, that sign was a miracle. Sign means a miracle. You have to, it's not a road sign. Stop, yield, go. 
it's not a road signs. There were no road signs in Jerusalem 2,000 years ago. So he's not talking about road signs. He's talking about a miracle. The Jews want a miracle from him. Not a road sign. So Jesus said, my miracle is that of Jonah. And then what the miraculous thing about Jonah is, that we expect him to die three times over and he didn't die. You see, if I had a gun and I lose my temper and put six shots through you, to your heart, and it is shattered and you die, is that a miracle? Is that? But those six shots tearing your heart to pieces and you laugh. <laughs> it's a miracle? Yes, yes, that's a miracle. That's a miracle. Six bullets I put through your heart and you still laugh. <laughs> that's a miracle. I'll be terrified of you. Do you know that? If that happened, I'll be terrified of you. <laughs> so, Jesus is talking that, look, the miracle mine is that of Jonah. What happened to him is going to happen to me. Mm. What happened to Jonah? We expect him to die. We expect him to die at every step. If he died, it's not a miracle. Mm. Jesus, if what they tell us about him, he also is supposed to die. He is expected to die. If he died, it's not a miracle. If he died, what they did to him, and if he died, it's not a miracle. Mm. If he didn't die, it's a miracle. Mm. So I'm asking, he said, I will be like Jonah. Jonah is alive, you agreed, and Jesus is dead. And that is in your language of the Englishman, it is unlike. In Zulu, I'm asking the Zulus, Goguba Jengo Jona. He said, just like Jonah. So I'm asking the Zulu, is this Jengo Jona, Ongai Jengo Jona? Is this like Jonah or unlike Jonah? And they say it's unlike Jonah. I'm asking the Africana, one Suas Yona. You know, like Jonah, Suas Yona. I'm asking the Africana, is this Suas Yona or Ni Suas Yona? In Arabic, he says, Ya mu'allimu nuridu an nara min ka ayatan. Fa ajaba wa kala lahum. Jilun shirirun wa fasikun. Very strong. In Arabic, this statement of Jesus is very, very strong compared to the English. It's Jilun, this is the Bible is written by the Christian, by the way, not me. Jilun shirirun wa fasikun yatlubu ayatan. Wa la tuta lahu ayata. Illa ayata. Yunan and Nabiu. Lianahu kamakana. Yunanu. Fi batnil huti. Salasa tayyamin. Wa salasa layalin. Hakaza. The word I was looking for was hakaza. Just like that. So I'm asking the Arab Christian, is this hakaza or la hakaza? Jesus and. Jonah, is it Hakaza just like that or La Hakaza? He said, no, it's La Hakaza. La Hakaza. La Hakaza. So, now that this statement is, 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 is a revelation from God, the Holy Ghost inspired Matthew to, to write it down, then it is proving that Jesus is a, if I was a Jew, I'll never accept Jesus. As a Muslim, I believe in Jesus as the Messiah, one of the mightiest messengers, as a Muslim. But as a Jew, I said, look, this man was put to the test and he failed again and again, he's failing. According to the test that he himself lays on himself, he is a failure, he is an imposter. And as an imposter, we killed him. I would have said that if I was a Jew. But as a Muslim, I say, I believe that he was a true messenger of God and you have misunderstood everything. You have misunderstood. May I just say something up on that? You are right. If you were to shoot me six times through the heart, right. and I was just still standing here, that would be a miracle. Of course. But if you were to shoot me six times through the heart and I was to die, be buried, and then I came back to life, that would also be a miracle. Right. Right. So it but still can be a miracle. First, first we have to say that you were dead. Yeah. First, 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 if I was shot six times through the heart, I would be dead. That's no, no. That's what is assumed now. Now Jesus, look, three days, three days after his alleged crucifixion. He goes to that upper room where they had the Last Supper. I'm giving you another proof that the man didn't die. Proof from his own mouth. He goes to that upper room where they had the Last Supper. And he goes in and he wishes his disciples in the Hebrew language, Shalom Aleichum. Same as Salam Aleichum. We say Salam Aleichum, the Jews say Shalom Aleichum. Same, means peace be unto you. And when he said Shalom Aleichum, his disciples were terrified. Mm. I'm reading your John that the disciples were petrified, terrified. So I'm asking, why would they be terrified? 
Because when you meet your long lost master, your grandfather, your teacher, your guru, your prophet, your messiah, the Arab and the Jew will embrace one another and that is his way. The Arab and the Jew. <laughs> but instead of doing that, they are terrified. So I'm asking, why were they terrified? So Luke chapter 24, he gives the answer. That they were affrighted because they thought he was a spirit. Am I quoting correctly? You people who know the Bible, am I quoting correctly? Yes. Correct me. If I'm misquoting, you must correct me. Yes, yes, I know. I can't afford to make a mistake. <laughs> So I said, why would they think? And they thought, they thought he was a, a spirit. So I'm asking, did he look like a spirit? Did he look like a spirit? And everybody says no. Then I said, why should they think the man is a spirit when he didn't look like one? The Christian is puzzled. Why would they say that they thought he was a spirit when he didn't look like a spirit? So I said, look, I'll help you. I'll help you. You see, the disciples of Jesus, they had heard from hearsay people talking that the master was hanged on the cross. They had heard from hearsay people talking that he had given up the ghost, meaning his spirit had come out, he had died. They had heard from hearsay people talking that now he's dead and buried for three days. All that knowledge was from hearsay people talking. Because Mark Chapter 14, verse 50, he tells us that at the most critical juncture in the life of Jesus, all his disciples forsook him and fled. All. So I'm asking the brown Englishman and the white Englishman, Sir, does all mean all in your language? Hmm? Does all, does it mean all in your language? Of course, all means all. <laughs> all means all. So they were not there. They were not eyewitnesses or your witness to the happening. They all had forsaken him. That's what the Mark tells. Unless he's lying. You tell me he was a lying. His Holy Ghost had deceived him too. He said all his disciples forsook him and fled. So they were not eyewitnesses or your witness to the happenings. So they had heard that man is dead and buried. They expect him to be stinking in his grave. Such a person you see, naturally you are terrified. You see, he must be a ghost, a spook. So Jesus wants to assure them that is not what they are thinking. So he said, Unzuru ilayya Behold my hands and my feet. Inni ana huwa, that it is I myself. Hussuni wanzuru, he said, handle me and see. For in ruha laisa lahu lahmun wa For the spirit has no flesh and bones, as you see me have. So again I'm talking, my dear brother, you Arab Christian and you English Christians, I said, if I said, look, because I got flesh and bones, I'm not a spirit, I'm not a ghost, I'm not a spook. Is that what it means in your language? If I got flesh and bones, in that case, I'm not a spirit, I'm not a ghost, I'm not a spook. Is that what it means in your language? Of course it does. If you got flesh and bones, you're not a spirit, you're not a ghost, you're not a spook. Anybody. If you got this, then you're not that. In other words, he's telling you that the body that you're seeing is not a translated body, it is not a metamorphosed body, it is not a resurrected body. Because the resurrected bodies get spiritualized. You want to know who says so? I said, you're Paul. You say, who says so? I say, you're Jesus. You want reference? I give them to you. Come, can bring your bishops and your archbishops to come and have a dialogue with me. In, in, in Sydney, I come again. By God, at my own expense, I will come. Get me a bishop or an archbishop and we have a symposium, not a debate, a symposium. Present your case and let me present our case and let the people go and make the choice. So, he said, handle me and see. Tengokla, tanganku, dan kakiku, inila ku sendiri, jamahala ku dan lihatla, karena hantu tira bardaging dan tulang, seperti yang kamu lihat ada padaku. <laughs> wow. So they felt him. I'm reading. I'm reading your Bible. And they felt him. And they believed not for joy. It means they were overjoyed and wondered. So what happened, man? We thought the man was dead and buried. So he says, Have you got here anything to eat? 
فَنَاوَلُوهُ جُزْءًا مِّن سَمَكٍ وَشَيْئًا مِّن شَهَدِ عَسَلٍ فَأَخَذَ وَأَكَلَ قُدَّامَهُمْ And they gave a piece of broiled fish and a honeycomb and he took it and he ate in the very side to prove what? There is a ghost. Is that how you prove you are a ghost? You are a spook? Huh? You are eating broiled fish and honeycomb. They are feeling you. And they say, no, they wonder. They say, man, I thought the man was dead. He's alive. Hooray, he's alive. And eating broiled fish and honeycomb to prove what? He's a ghost. He's a spook. Man, every verse that I can quote you from the Bible, I said, every verse you have misunderstood, my brothers. You Englishmen, you brown Englishmen, and you white Englishmen, whether you call yourself American, you speak English, you are an Englishman. And I want to say, come, talk to me in English. Talk to me in English. And I show you that each and every verse you have misunderstood. Every verse you have misunderstood, my son. Okay, my son. Thank you, my son. Yes, my son. Wow. Wow. This is very interesting um, video. Listening to Sheikh um, Ahmed Didad giving his account on Jesus Christ, on who he was, to whether he is a God or not, and then try to interpret in depth uh, on Matthew chapter 12, verse 16, that Jesus Christ uh, was asking his disciple on who he was. And then after Peter spoke and all that, he says that flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father in heaven. And that's when he spoke about him going to Jerusalem, suffer in the hands of the elders, and then he will be crucified, and then he will raise after um, three days. And then talking about um, when Jesus Christ rose from death, he went to the upper room, and then therefore he saw the disciple that's according to account of um mark that says that when they saw him they thought that he was a ghost and all those things but then at the end of the day just like how we spoke about um miracle of um, jesus christ at the end of the day his death and everything was just a miracle Per se, just like how the account of Mark says that they all fled when they, Jesus Christ was um, arrested and was about to be crucified. To whether he was crucified or not, or not according to the Islamic um, belief on crucifixion of Jesus, because the Hadith states that he was not um, crucified, but therefore he was safe from death that he prayed when he went to the mountain and then he prayed that god save him from that um, crucifixion and then he was taken away even though it's actually the hadith and not in the quran so it means that there is not that it's being substantiated that it is really true that this is the process or how you are going to maybe probably dispute it you understand from the bible only god knows better but then one thing we all have in common either as a christian or a muslim is that we both expect that jesus christ will return back to this very earth again so the muslim expect his second coming the christians expect his second coming at the end of the day all I can say to you is, wherever you find yourself, just hold your religion or your belief very firmly. Believe in God and know fully well that whatever you do on this very earth, you are going to give an account of it on the judgment day. And on how you are able to like live your life and conduct yourself while you are here will determine whether you are going to have a second life or not. So about jesus whether he is god or is a prophet it's god that knows better and we are all going to find this out on the last day i know that a lot of you have told an opinion concerning this video and i want you to drop it at the comment section 
let's all learn from one another so this is the end of my video if you like my reaction if you like share and subscribe and if you have any video you want me to react to don't forget to drop it at the comment section and i'm going to check it out so guys you remain blessed and i see you in my next video bye bye